The next calculation that we need to look at is the margin of safety. Let's first go through the formula. You calculate the margin of safety by taking expected sales, deducting break-even sales, and then dividing by expected sales. And this is going to give you an answer as a percentage. Now, you can either perform this calculation using units or rand values, and regardless of whether you use units or rand values, you'll still get exactly the same answer. So if you're working with units, you take expected sales in units, you deduct your break-even point in units, and you divide by expected sales in units. On the other hand, if you're working with RAND values, you take the RAND value of your expected sales, you deduct your break-even point in RANDs, and you divide by the RAND value of your expected sales. So what does this calculation tell us? It indicates the amount by which sales can decrease until the break-even point is reached. So let's say, for example, you've calculated the margin of safety to be 40%. That means expected sales can drop by 40% until the break-even point is reached. If sales drop by more than 40%, then the company will suffer a loss. So that is the maximum that expected sales can drop by before the company experiences a loss. Please work through the lecture example provided. The calculation is very straightforward. Then for sensitivity analysis, you'll remember I said to you, it makes sense to perform all of these CVP calculations at the beginning of the year. It doesn't make any sense performing these calculations at the end of the year when we already have the actual results. So if these calculations are being performed at the beginning of the year, we will be using budgeted figures in the calculations. So the problem with that is the estimates or the budgeted figures that are used in these cost volume profit calculations are subject to uncertainty. And the break even point will be affected if any of the variables used in the calculation change. So for example, if the selling price per unit changes, that will obviously affect the break-even point. If the variable costs or the fixed costs change, that will also affect the break-even point. So sensitivity analysis is one approach that can be used to cope with the changes in the values of variables. And it indicates the maximum change that can be absorbed without incurring losses. So in other words, what is the maximum that the selling price per unit can drop by until the company reaches their break-even point? Or what is the maximum that fixed or variable costs can increase by until the company reaches their break-even point? Let's go and have a look at the lecture example. The following budgeted information relates to Savannah Limited for the year ended 31 December 20x7. So you've been given the selling price per unit, the variable cost per unit, fixed costs, and also the expected sales volume. So before we move on, let's calculate their budgeted profit for the year ended 31 December 20x7. So the budgeted selling price per unit is 25 Rand. The budgeted variable cost per unit is 12 Rand. They expect to sell 250,000 units. So that will give us our total contribution. Then deduct the fixed costs and calculate the budgeted profit. So let's go to the required. You need to determine the extent to which Savannah Limited can absorb unexpected fluctuations without incurring losses. And first we need to perform this calculation for the selling price per unit. So if you go back to the budgeted information provided, they have a budgeted selling price per unit of 25 Rand. And if the selling price per unit is 25 Rand, 
they expect to have a profit of 900,000 Rand. We now need to calculate the maximum that the selling price per unit can decrease by without Savannah Limited incurring losses. Or in other words, the maximum that the selling price per unit can decrease by until they reach their break-even point. Now you are going to perform these calculations using your profit formula. And because we are trying to calculate the maximum that the selling price per unit can decrease by until they reach their break-even point, your profit is going to be zero. Then, whatever you're trying to solve for, that is your unknown. So we are currently busy working with the selling price per unit. We are trying to calculate what the selling price per unit must be if profit is zero. So you let the selling price per unit equal Y. That is our unknown. And when you are performing these calculations, we assume that all other variables remain constant. So the only thing that is going to change is the selling price per unit. Everything else remains the same. So how do we calculate sales? Sales is made up of the selling price per unit multiplied by the number of units. So the number of units is 250,000 and the selling price per unit is Y. That is the unknown that we are solving for. Your variable costs are made up of the variable cost per unit multiplied by the number of units. So the variable cost per unit is 12 Rand and the number of units is 250,000. And then obviously also deduct your fixed costs. If you then solve for Y, you've calculated the selling price so that the company breaks even. Now, you haven't answered the required. We need to calculate the maximum that that selling price can drop by without the company incurring losses or the maximum that it can drop by until they reach their break-even point. So if the budgeted selling price per unit is 25 Rand, at a selling price of 21 Rand 40, the company will not make a profit or a loss. At that selling price, they reach their break-even point. So that is the minimum selling price. If the selling price drops below this point, then the company will suffer a loss. So we obviously don't want that. So if we are trying to calculate the maximum that it can drop by, you take the budgeted selling price, you deduct the selling price that you just calculated over here, and you divide by the budgeted selling price. So the maximum that the selling price per unit can decrease by is 14.4% before a loss is incurred. If the selling price per unit drops by more than 14.4%, then the company will suffer a loss. Now, I want you to look at the rest of the calculations on your own, applying exactly the same logic. So next, you are going to calculate the maximum that the sales volume can decrease by without Savannah Limited incurring losses. You are then going to calculate the maximum that the variable cost per unit can increase by without Savannah Limited incurring losses. And lastly, you are going to calculate the maximum that their fixed costs can increase by without the company incurring losses. Please remember, for all of these calculations, you are going to use the profit formula. Profit is always equal to zero because we are trying to calculate the sales volume, the variable cost per unit, and the fixed costs at the break-even point. And whatever you're solving for, that is the unknown and that is why. So if we are trying to calculate the maximum that the sales volume can drop by until they reach the break-even point, you let the sales volume equal Y. When you are performing the calculation for the variable cost per unit, you let the variable cost per unit equal Y. And the same logic applies obviously also to fixed costs. So please look at the remaining calculations and apply exactly the same logic as I did with the selling price per unit.